It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change your attitude, change your life. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life brings you interviews with some of the most inspirational and influential people in the world. It's our goal to educate and empower you so you can live your best life now. Thank you for taking time for yourself, and thank you for letting us be a part of your life. We have another great show for you today. Across America, people are working hard, and yet many just can't get ahead. They're exhausted, and often they feel that they have no ability to make a difference. But according to today's guest, Congressman Tim Ryan, people are beginning to take action. They are slowing down, paying attention, and gaining an awareness of the inner resources at their disposal. This new way is based on the practice of mindfulness. In his book, A Mindful Nation, Congressman Ryan shows how the benefits of mindfulness apply to the current challenges that affect each of us in our own lives and in our communities, and thus have implications for our society as a whole. Congressman Ryan is serving in his fifth term representing Ohio's 17th Congressional District. He serves as a member of the House Armed Services Committee, as well as its subcommittees on readiness and on emerging threats and capabilities. He also serves as a member of the House Budget Committee and as co-chairman of the Congressional Manufacturing Caucus. He is the author of the book, A Mindful Nation, How a Simple Practice Can Help Us Reduce Stress, Improve Performance, and Recapture the American Spirit. Welcome, Congressman Ryan. Thank you so much for joining us. Great to be with you. Congressman, it's a pleasure to have you here because I think today, more than ever, we need to hear this message. And you've been representing Americans in government for some time now. And from your experience, what have you witnessed and learned that inspired you to write this book? Well, it came from a personal experience I had um, with the the practice of mindfulness, with taking some quiet time every day and then it actually really stemmed from which I I've been doing on and off my whole life with different kinds of mindfulness practices awareness practices um, whether they're some of them are religious that go back to my time as a Catholic school boy to secular practices that I use um, but that quiet time that that is so essential to replenish ourselves that we need that we're really not getting today in our society and we've really got to carve that time out. I mean we're a long way away from when a majority of people worked on farms and just had a natural kind of quiet time, you know, sometimes hours and hours at a time to how hectic things are. But this for me stemmed from a retreat I was on for five days that introduced more and more silence into the days until we had uh, a 36 hour period of silence towards the end of the retreat and really a light bulb went off for me because I recognized that you know you can slow your mind down you can begin to see your thoughts you can quiet your mind down and once you see thoughts that are maybe more negative or critical that you can then shift your attention and I that to me that was a really really big shift in my own thinking and knowing that you know, immediately thought, why didn't someone teach me this when I was a kid? You mm-hmm. know, right. I wish I would have known this. But knowing the anxiety that we all go through and knowing the economic anxiety or veterans who are coming back traumatized or, you know, what's going on in a lot of our neighborhoods, I felt like this would be a really important thing to share with people as a way to transform our country. How can this practice impact our country? When we move so fast and we're oblivious to daily events, how can slowing down actually better our country? Well, I think in a couple ways, it makes us, it keeps us connected to each other. Uh, it, it helps slow us down and that improves our performance. I think if you look at the highest performing athletes or musicians or performers in so many different categories, you know, they talk about having a quiet mind. They talk about things slowing down for them. And I think if, if, if we want to perform, if those of us who aren't those highly tuned athletes or performers, you know, we can perform better at whatever tasks that we're approaching day to day, moment to moment. 
and we can approach those with a quieter mind. And when you approach them with a quieter mind, I think you are less reactive. You tend to respond as opposed to react, which is a very helpful uh, skill set. Um, you, I, I call it the ultimate prevention because you don't necessarily say things that make situations or conflicts worse because of things you say. You can kind of increase the space between stimulus and response so that you can kind of catch yourself and so you don't have a lot of messes to clean up because you don't say things that you maybe otherwise would would have said. And then I think there's a there's there's a connection you can make when you're when you, your mind is kind of steady and quiet that Mm -hmm. you otherwise wouldn't have, and that means connection to family, friends, kids, grandkids, coworkers, people in your church and your community that you otherwise may not because your mind's so busy you're not slowed down enough to be able to connect. So our country is most successful, most thriving, most robust, the most reflective of America, what's best in America. When we're connected, we saw that coming out of the greatest generation. They were so connected because of the depression and the war and everything that really kind of seared them together as a generation. They were most connected, and that's when we were most successful as a country, economically, culturally. We had we really hit some high marks, and today we're disconnected. And I think it can help us recapture the American spirit, become more creative, more innovative in solving a lot of our problems, knowing that we're in it together, if we slow down a little bit, if our mind was a little more quiet, like the great athletes that we watch on TV. Congressman, you more than anyone else knows that health care costs are skyrocketing and more people today are medicated and they're stressed out. And do you think that this practice is a way to address our health care costs nationwide? Yeah, I don't I don't think there's any question that this needs to be a fundamental approach in all aspects. And I'm not saying that we need to eliminate you know, medicine or, you know, pharmaceuticals. I'm just saying we Mm -hmm. need to use a heck of a lot less and we can use a heck of a lot less. And what you're seeing now with mindfulness practices and mindfulness practice and other practices, you're beginning to see it applied for um, relapse prevention, for example. So it can be used for uh, people who are recovering from addiction. Uh, can be a major component there. We know what stress does uh, to our bodies and our minds and how that can cause us to get sick. If we can reduce our stress level and allow our body to heal itself, which it naturally wants to do if we don't interfere with really bad food and high, high levels of stress, that's what impedes the body in a lot of instances from healing itself. Not enough sleep is another one. We can allow our body to heal ourselves, and over time that can bring down health care costs. A quieter mind, a slower disposition um, will allow us, I think, to make better decisions with our diet, with what we eat, by catching ourselves from uh, instead of habitually eating or not really thinking uh, about what we put into our mouths and what that effect is going to have on our bodies by slowing down. Again, we can catch ourselves. So you see mindfulness uh, practices being applied to all these different areas that over time can drive down health care costs. And it's very inexpensive. Um, it's easy to learn. It's not always easy to do, but it's easy to learn, and a little more difficult to practice. But if we create a culture around it of where this is this is kind of fundamental. And if you look at what really the military is doing now, too, within the concept of military health care and what we're training our soldiers and airmen and seamen and women to do, the center of the approach is being aware, being mindful. And if we can apply that to our own health care system, I believe over time we can really significantly reduce health care expenditures. Congressman, probably one of the biggest things that I've heard from people is that they don't have time. People like to use that excuse for everything. They don't have time to sit quietly or to to, um, exercise or to eat healthily. I mean, that's like everyone's favorite excuse. So what do you say to those, given the challenges of daily life, that say that there's no time to sit back and do nothing? You know, it is, to me, the ultimate prevention. Mm -hmm. And in if we realize how many times a day we maybe increase our workload, we increase conflict, we increase messes that we have to clean up because of how we do things, I think if you just try it for five or ten minutes a day or five or ten minutes twice a day, if you can't carve out the time, 
and try it, you're going to bring a quality of life um, that, that you haven't really had. And you will see yourself beginning to make decisions that prevent you from causing more trouble for yourself. You will see yourself uh, making decisions that are more in tune with your intuition and more in tune with kind of the direction that you really want to go in. And you're going to see your interactions with people improve. And all of this can bring down your stress level and increase your quality of life, but also increase your decision making. And again, it's like those high performing athletes, whether you're a single mom uh, or you're a congressman or you're an NBA basketball player, carving out time for mental training, mental fitness is really a great gift you can give to yourself. And really, it is an act of love for yourself. I mean, it's an act of love you know, for you to, to, to take 20 minutes a day for you because if you're not right, you're certainly not going to be the best mom you could be or the best dad you can be or the best congressman you can be. And we need everybody to be the best that they can be. And you need to spend some time taking care of yourself. And even if it's so difficult that it's only five or 10 minutes a day, uh, at the end of the day, you know, that's that's going to be something that's going to benefit you a great deal. So my, my recommendation is just try it. If you got to get up a few minutes early, do that and notice the difference. The book is A Mindful Nation, How a Simple Practice Can Help Us Reduce Stress, Improve Performance, and Recapture the American Spirit by Congressman Tim Ryan. If you would like to learn more about the congressman and his work, you can visit timryan.gov. Congressman, in about 30 seconds or less, what's the takeaway? What do you want to leave our listeners with? We have an amazing capacity as human beings, and I don't believe that we are coming anywhere close to tapping into it. I think there are policies that that I'm fighting for in Washington that, that we need to implement that can help. But every individual has to take a few minutes each day really to recognize the immense power they have with inside of themselves quieting their mind and begin tapping into this amazing gift that we have to be a human being and tap into that. That starts with quieting your mind, slowing down and feeling the immense power and opportunities that you have and tapping into that. And that's what will transform your church or your home or your community or your state and eventually hopefully our country and our world to make it the kind of world that really is worth living in and the kind of world that we want to give our kids. Congressman, thank you so much for being here and for discussing why being mindful and slowing down can help us build a better life and a better world. As I said, this is such an important message, especially today, and I really appreciate you taking the time to be here. Thank you so much for having me. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Joan Herman, host of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Did you know that Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life has a free monthly digital magazine that can be read online or emailed to your inbox? Every month, nationally recognized leaders in their field provide information to educate, inspire, and motivate you. We believe in a holistic approach to life, incorporating mind, body, and spirit. Check out a copy of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life 24-7. Visit CYACYL.com and be sure to tell your friends. for joining us today. We hope you found the show informative. At Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, we believe that knowledge is power. Take what you've learned, apply it, and live your best life now. Remember that the information provided are the opinions of our guests and should never replace the advice of a professional who knows your personal situation. If you'd like more information, visit our website, cyacyl.com. That stands for Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. While on the site, listen to past shows on demand, read the digital magazine, and be sure to follow the show on Facebook and Twitter. Until next time, this is Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.